We're back for more of the quest and a win tonight, and we would have one foot into the knockout round of the Europa League. So we've been very busy since the last episode when we were beating Fiorentina in the opening game of that league phase. It's not an unblemished record. I wouldn't even say we're playing that well, to be honest, but we have been picking up some results, both in the league and in the Europa League as well. So straight fresh from that Fiorentina game, we had a very impressive performance where we beat Slavon Belupo 4-1 before a disappointing result next. We were taking on Slavia Prague, one of the teams who, when we were drawn against them, I'd identified as a potential three-pointer. We were poor in this game. I think 3-2 flattered us, to be honest, despite the fact that we were 2-1 up going into almost the last five minutes of the game. Our opponents were superior throughout, and it was a very, very disappointing result to match a pretty bang-average performance. We then drew 1-1 in the league with Rijeka before a good little run. We got a 3-0 win against our former club, Lokomotiva. Tony Magic was on the score sheet. Something that is going to become increasingly important to us, I think, as he's making his way into the first team more and more. And we could do with big performances from the Magic Man. We made progress in the cup only to get knocked out of it on penalties against Rijeka a couple of weeks later. In the league, we beat Istra 2-0 and Sibenyek 2-1 before a really important 3-0 victory against Antwerp. After that Prague game, it was important to bounce back to winning ways and we did just that. We were 2-0 up at halftime. We added a third in the second half. We didn't have a single shot on target against us. So that was a pleasing victory. And then we had two more good performances. A 2-0 win in the league against Farosh Din and a 4-1 victory against Israeli opponents before two little stutters. A 1-1 draw with Osiek, that was first against second in the league. We will show you the table in a moment. We were reliant on a 93rd minute goal from Levaya, his first of the season, to get us a draw in that game. And then in our most recent fixture, we were a goal up against Goritza, and then with eight minutes remaining, they found an equaliser. We went a little bit more gung-ho. We didn't add an extra shot in that final eight-plus stoppage time minutes of the game. It was disappointing once more. We've got almost a fully fit squad for our game tonight. And we could do with a victory because we are hovering just inside the eight clubs that will automatically qualify for the last 16 of the Europa League. Very, very tight in there. We are on nine points, leading a clutch of clubs who are all on the same total. We're only three points from the summit, which is held by Denmark's Norseland. And today, we'll be taking on Danish opponents ourselves in the form of Michelin. It's tight at the top of the table in the Europa League. It's tight at the top of the table in our domestic league as well. We have a two-point lead ahead of Osiek. We're five clear against Hajduk, but we are taking them on in our next league encounter. And then there's a bit of a gap going back to Goritza in fourth. We're performing well without playing the most fluent of attacking football, I would say. We mentioned how important the magic man has been becoming for us. He's now leading Croatia in terms of average ratings. He started five games. He's got three goals. He's chipped in with two assists as well. And we've been playing him as a deep lying forward. But of course, not in European games. He signed when we were forced to sell Usu, our wonder kid Ivorian. And he wasn't signed in time to be eligible to register for the league phase. We should be able to get him registered for the knockout phases should we make it that far. And I think we might need him because at six foot four, with a jumping reach of 17 and vision of 15, he has proven important both as a finisher and as an assist maker in our game so far. Where we really are missing Uso is in the advanced forward position. Pilcic is trying his best, God love him. And he's performing very well in training and improving all the time. But four goals in 12 appearances is not quite of the level that we are looking for in order for us to win the Croatian top division and make the final of the Europa League. I'm hoping 
that as he evolves and matures, he's still only 18, he might become more consistent and finish more of the chances that come his way. He has been victim to having a few goals chalked out, not for his own offsides, but for the infractions of others. So he's been a little bit unlucky. For tonight's game, with the Magic Man not eligible to play, we really would like Miroslav Milanovic to be playing as our deep-lying forward, but he's been carrying a knock for a couple of weeks, is lacking a little bit of sharpness, has been off with the Croatian under-21s even though he was carrying an injury, and hasn't come back in the best of shape. So we're going to play Cole Palmer as our deep-lying forward. He seems to be a player who is on the decline. I think that might be my fault, as I am training him in a position that at 28 years old, he didn't really want to be playing. And I think that is taking away from his attributes that he's currently amassed. And they are declining the better he learns the position that I'm asking him to play. We've got some other performers who we really are going to need bigger things from in the second half of the season. One of them is Petar Ishek, who himself is a wonder kid, but not one that plays very well. In 11 games in the league this season, he's just got two goal involvements and an average rating significantly south of a seven. He's not fared an awful lot better in Europe. He has a host of clubs from all of the big leagues interested in his services, I think the board will probably take matters into their own hands come January. But if he is to stay, we are going to need him to contribute. Otherwise, I think he's going to find himself out of the team. Over on the left-hand side, Gabriel Vidovic is also wanted, but he is far more important for us to keep hold of. He's got nine goal involvements in 11 starts, 16 appearances. The clubs that are interested in his services are from the Middle East. I'm hopeful that we can hang on to him, even if the board sell Ishek from beneath us. The other player who is critically important for us, we're going to bring back into the starting lineup tonight. This is Branko Pavic, our metronome at the base of the midfield. Three assists so far and two goals. He shoots from distance reasonably well, as does his midfield partner, Jan Parashek. He's got two goals in the league and one in Europe himself. For an anchor man who doesn't really have license to get forward, that is a useful little addition to our goals tally. We're going to make one other change tonight. We're going to bring back Kompan Bresnic. He was tired after he was on international duty with Slovenia. We left him out of the last league game, but he's going to come back for European action tonight. And that gives us our strongest Back four, I think, and our strongest midfield four. And with the addition of Milanovic up front, we would be playing our first choice 11, I believe. But Palmer's going to get out there and try and do a job for us tonight as we look for another three points that would take us closer. Qualifying for the last 16, Europa League. So the goal is to pick up three points tonight and cement our place in that top eight. But there is another scenario. We could come unstuck tonight, drop out of their automatic qualifying positions, and we've still got some tough games left to go in this competition, including a game against Valencia, which looks like our most difficult of the qualifiers that we've got. So trying to get a win tonight is crucially important. We've raced through the first 12, 13 minutes of the game. Neither side have had an effort. I think we're going to demand a little bit more of the team because they have not done a thing so far. We finally find ourselves in a highlight. Unfortunately, we don't have possession of the ball and Biscoff's got it on the edge of the area. He's danced past one of our players and Jimmy Chu slices it into an unguarded net. And I did say there was another scenario and we were opened up there. Medina plays it in field. Biscoff dances across the face of our area and goes past a man, and why there was nobody marking Cho at the far post, I could not answer you why our goalkeeper was beaten so easily by the cross. I am also not too sure. We need a response, and we come forward with Vidovic giving the ball back to Bresnic. He has given it away, 
Fortunately, Parashek mops it up. Here's the playmaker, Pavic. Gives it to Beckham Avia, gets a return pass. And now Cole Palmer's looking to try and craft a chance for us. It was a terrible pass by Palmer. And now we're on the defensive again. Rickard steals the ball back. Parashek promptly gives it away. And now Michelin are coming forward, looking for a second once more. They beat us fairly comfortably for pace in the wide areas. And then Bischoff, who made the first goal, fires home the second. And we are in a world of trouble after half an hour of this game. Michelin are way below us in the table. I think they are, what, 25th, 26th in this league. We are up in 7th. But the form book is being turned on its head as we find ourselves 2-0 down, berating the team from the sidelines. They've only had two efforts the entire game and they've both whizzed past our keeper. And we have our first effort on target that Pilcic passes to the goalkeeper rather than shoots. And we find ourselves on the receiving end of a very unwelcome result for so far. Ishak looks like he is struggling. He might come off at half time. We have Pavic getting into the air, and with the outside of his foot, he stings the goalkeeper's palms. But we have got 6.5 performances from both of our strikers, and we are probably going to have to change things in the second period to try and get back into this game. Even if the second half goes well, I think a draw is the best we can do. But at the moment, we look a million miles away from that. So we've made two changes for the second period. We've panicked and substituted two of our underperforming players. Ishek was carrying a knock. He's been replaced. And we've also brought Milanovic on, even though he's struggling for sharpness. And Cole Palmer is now sat in the dugout with a training jacket over his head, just thinking on how poor he was in the first half. We've played a long ball forward that's come off Medina. Pilcic is in. And there is a pretty standard Pilcic finish. He's clean through on goal. He's got the pace to get in one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. He has got the composure of somebody on their first date, I'm afraid. And he just spanks it over the bar. Here is Milanovic moving slowly for a player who is struggling for fitness. But he has got the will to get us back into the game. It was perhaps not the most convincing of finish. And fair play to Pilcic. He had the vision to send him up. He was running like David Hasselhoff in the opening credits of Baywatch, but he has managed to send the ball past the goalkeeper down the middle of the goal. And with 55 minutes on the clock, we are back in the game. And we're going to encourage our players to keep it up. We've now had seven shots, four of them on target. Only those two shots that have both led to goals have been had by our opponents. And if we could find an equaliser fairly swift then we could go for it in the final half an hour of this game. Schmidt has the ball for them. Let's hope he's going to launch it clear and we can rob it back. Instead, they're playing with a little bit more composure as we don't press with the vigour and the vitality that I was hoping we would. And now they cross the halfway line and Cho has an effort from a good 30 yards out. It heads over the bar. That's their third shot of the game and we go quickly into yet another highlight where they've got the ball in the midfield and they are playing through the thirds once more. They've been dangerous in wide areas before and they are again as a header drifts just wide of Volstead's left-hand post. From the goal kick, he plays the ball to Pavic and Pavic brings it forward to Milanovic, but it is snuffed out. Serdar now has the ball at the back. Here is Beckham Avia. He sends the ball out to Kompan Bresnic. And we cross the halfway line, but not for long. Kompan Bresnic has the heaviest of touch. He has the touch of somebody that carries bricks for a living. But we've got the ball back again. Milanovic gives it away. Pavic, Sesla. And there is the equaliser. And we've got 25 minutes to try and get a winner in this game. We change things up at half time. We've asked them to press a little further up the pitch. We've given the wing backs attack duties, even though the two wide players in front of them of the same duty as well. And the whole team seems to have come out with a bit of a, a renewed energy for this second period. 20 minutes of it played. We are now back level. We're going to see whether we need to make any more changes because there's a chance we could still win this tie. We've made a change in central midfield. I think we're going to have to make a second because Pavic is tiring. 
We've bought on his replacement anyway, and he's going to switch across and be the deep line playmaker when we bring Pavic off. But I thought we might try and have five minutes or so with two creative players at the base of the midfield to see if we could find what could be a winning goal. Piltic has a good effort this time. He's another player that struck the ball with the outside of his foot. It curls just past the post. And now, Michelander coming forward. It's the ever dangerous Biscoff. Neto has an effort. It clatters off one of our defenders. It goes out for a throw in. We've got 20 minutes left to play. Five minutes, I think, until we might need to make our final two substitutions. They send a corner into the box. Here's Nieto again. He has a clear sight of goal. It's charged down. And Milanovic brings the ball away from us. 73 minutes on the clock. This is turning into a very tense end to this game. Here is Sessler, one of the players that we bought on at half time. A deep ball goes out to Rickard. He's got the beating of their fullback. And Pilcic finally, from almost an unmissable position, scores in this game. And maybe that was. One of the harder chances because it did whiz across the box pretty fast. Rickard sends the ball in. It's a low cross. He takes it on his left. Not the natural foot to take that one on, I would argue. And it goes into the corner of the goal. And on 74 minutes, we can make our final two changes and see whether we can pick up these three points. We race to 85, 86, 88 minutes now. The highlights have quietened a little bit. I think the boys. Have just got a little bit of control back of the game. We have a corner with an alarming six minutes of stoppage time still to play. We've played just one of those. Pilcic has another effort. Bekmavia has a composure to send the ball out wide. It's a pretty terrible ball in. But here we come again. Milanovic, Pilcic. I think they're going to be checking this one for offside. But the 18-year-old might just have bagged his second goal of the game. Doesn't even look like there was a review. He was onside, according to the officials. Avia was involved in winning the ball back for us. Milanovic sends a little pass to Pilcic. That's a very composed finish. And I have criticised him, but the boy is now on a hat trick. We've come from 2-0 down at the interval to 4-2 up as we approach the final couple of minutes of stoppage time. Volstek claims a ball into the box. He has a little pause. He has a little think, and then just hoofs the ball forward. We give it away. We're going to give our opponents another opportunity to attack us. A goal here would make it a very nervy last 60 seconds. Hopefully the fact that it's a corner should chew up enough time that they won't be able to score twice. Volstead shows how solid he's been for us since he came to the club. He's picked up another aerial ball, sends the Free kick that he's won out to our left back. And that is enough for the referee this evening. That's a bit of a let off. 2 0 down at half time. They've come back and actually had 10 shots when at the interval they'd only had two. But we've roared back with four goals in the second half. All of which lifts us to fourth place in the table. Norseland and Newcastle are now at least assured of a playoff spot. But we're only three points behind them, and we've got three games left to play. They're not going to be easy. The next is against last year's finalist young boys. Then we've got that Valencia game. By the time we come back to face Brown in the final of those fixtures, we could have lost both of those games and still be scrapping to try and qualify as right for the last 16 of the Europa League.